Hey, so I wanted to do a video real quick on um, plasma reactors, fusion reactors, what I see as plausible, where I see the logistical hang-ups. Um, so basically, the existing technology as I understand it, you have like the Stellarator design, and then there's um, there's another design that's like a ball. But ba basically, the the problems are um, in a, in a fusion reactor, you have to confine the plasma with magnets. Otherwise, the plasma reacts with the. Um, containment vessel and destroys it. So the plasma needs to be insulated from the surrounding environment and that's accomplished typically through high power magnets. Now there are alternative designs out there that use electricity to generate a plasma field and um, or, or plasma and as a secondary byproduct of inducing the plasma with electricity, they are generating a magnetic field. Now, that design, to my knowledge, has not demonstrated anything besides the ability to remediate nuclear waste in a practical way. So there are a few designs there. Um, the, the primary one that I focused on before was the Sapphire experiment uh, and they have gone corporate and are seeking private investment. Um, I don't see what the problem is as far as fast tracking that is if they can demonstrate the viability of their technology in a, in a real scientific way and publicly uh, they, they haven't done so, at least not to my satisfaction. Um, there are other designs that basically fire high-powered lasers, which is plasma, um, or induces plasma through the reaction with the um, gas molecules it interacts with, um, at nuclear waste and breaks the nuclear waste down and generates some electricity there. But I'm, I'm quite sure that the radioactive gaseous byproducts from that are a uh, engineering hurdle that has limited its potential in the market. Um, so the big problem is how much energy it takes, traditionally this was the problem, um, how much energy it takes to power the magnets to confine the plasma versus how much plasma, or how much energy the energy they can reasonably expect to extract from the plasma. And it basically has never been worth it. And then they came up with these super efficient magnets that have to be kept ice cold and if you can imagine from a design perspective, you want your magnetic coils, which have to be ice cold, as close as possible to your plasma. And then simultaneously, you're going to have to be extracting heat from that plasma. So you're gonna need another layer between your magnetic coils and your plasma to function as a heat exchanger that is within the protective field of the magnets but not so much so that it's destroyed by the plasma. And all while stirring the plasma because the plasma doesn't want to um, stay evenly mixed, I guess is probably the way to describe it. And so they constantly have to be changing the magnetic lines of flux in order to keep the uh, fusion reaction going. So they're having all these engineering problems and this has been going on for decades and it is mind-numbing from an environmentalist standpoint um, because there are other alternatives that are currently
completely viable. Um, but what strikes me as plausible for next gen fusion is to go really, 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 really small. And I mean like one molecule of hydrogen being released into a micro reactor that has electrically excited catalysts and that single molecule or I guess it would be two molecules or it would probably be a, a percentage thing so it would probably need four or six to you know have a high probability of a reaction taking place but in a very small container where you are literally just feeding in individual molecules of hydrogen um, one at a time and allowing them to fuse in a very small container. Now, where you might gain some benefit there is capitalizing on the natural electromagnetic lines of flux that you would be generating by exciting your catalysts with electricity. The real question would be, hey, does it work? I don't know. Um, I imagine if you pump enough energy into it, it would work. You know, would would an excited catalyst be enough? I don't know. I imagine probably at a certain point of enough voltage and the right catalyst, yes. But um, if not, you know, there's uh, other ways to introduce plasma energy into um, a, a containment vessel. And those those options, um, whether direct plasma or, or otherwise, could be looked into. But it shouldn't matter. You should be able to use enough voltage. The question is, how quickly would you destroy your catalyst, and is it worth it? Um, I think it's 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 seriously worth investigating um, fusion micro reactors, and I mean very 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 small reactors, and introducing, you know single digit molecules at a time and and just see um there is a balance between the mass that you are trying to fuse and the amount of energy um you add a vacuum to that and a very 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 small uh, feed gas supply of hydrogen it, I, I think it's it's really worth serious investment at this point to to start investigating fusion micro reactors.